Hello, everyone. This is Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Welcome to a very special show, a unique beast type of show. I'm going to give you my uh, perspective, my thoughts on the metaverse and NFTs. So have a strong hand, long-term thinking. Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. One Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. Don't FOMO on altcoins. So keep all of that in mind, of course. Uh, so I have, I've got a, I know a lot of people out there. And I have a, a close friend who's an artist, actually. And he's very curious about these NFTs. And I know there's a lot of artist people that have heard about the NFTs because now they're, they're based around art. But NFTs in the metaverse are, are much more than art. Um, I want to stress that they're not money. NFTs are not money. Bitcoin is the best freaking money out there. Uh, it is not competing with NFTs. It has something to do with NFTs and the metaverse, though. But so I have a lot of people, and I have Bitcoiners and cryptocurrency enthusiasts that want my opinion on this subject matter. Now, I've talked about it in passing on some shows, but I've decided tonight um, for my, my friend, especially for my friend who, who asked me about it again, who sent me a message. I, I told him I was going to explain it on a video. So this is going to be my explainer of, I mean, the, the, the current uh, digital situation, virtual situation on this planet. Uh, and so the first thing that must be, so this is going to take a little while, bear with me. I have taken so many notes, written down so many ideas on NFTs, metaverse, and I didn't even review them before this. I was just brushing my teeth after my meal and thinking some things up. I'm like, I'm just spitting out everything that I just thought of. If I forget something, I forget something. So play this at 2x. If you're watching this tape, we're already two minutes in. It gets better than this. Trust me, dudes. It gets it gets better than this. I already, I, I know. Um, and again, follow me on Twitter, T-E-C-H-B-A-L-T. That's Tech Vault. DisruptMeister.com. You get all my videos. This Week in Bitcoin uh, will be this Thursday or Friday on my main channel. So what is what is the metaverse? That, that's the first thing that needs to be explained. And again, th this explainer video, this is not for cryptocurrency experts. This is for regular people. But there's a lot of cryptocurrency people that don't get this either. And there's a lot of people that just complexity worship. They love all these technical terms. They don't even know what they're talking about. So I'm breaking it down for real here. You're going to understand this. A kid can understand this. So what is the metaverse? What is this thing you've been hearing about? Companies are investing in it. Yes, real companies are pouring money into it. And real people are creating things, quote unquote, in it. Well, let's go back to 2016. All right, let's go back to 2016. And imagine if I told you, Hey, I was just on Zoom. And guess what? In 2016, that was my first time on Zoom. That is when Zoom was actually created. You would not know what the heck I was talking about back then. Okay, you, you what, what Zoom? And I, I would, you know, I would explain, well, I, just, it, I had a virtual a meeting with someone and we broadcast it on YouTube. And you would kind of get it, but like, would they, why would you have a virtual meeting with someone? You could just have a meeting with someone in their office. And well, they were in Chile. They, they were in Chile. This person was in Chile. And then they would get it. Okay, you, you need a virtual space that can be shared with others um, and to meet. But you're not really meeting with them because, well, we were sharing information. Well, well, meeting someone is, you know, physically touching them, being in the same office as them. Now, you know, fast forward four years to the uh, when Zoom became popular because of the virus. Well, everyone understood what a virtual meeting was very quick. But, and that was reality. Those meetings were reality. They didn't need a location, okay? But let's go back to 2016 again. And uh, and, I, and it's important to note that when that, that, that first Zoom meeting I did with the guy in Chile, it was about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, okay? So for those of you who are not familiar with me or just think, oh, this is some guy talking out of his backside, as early as 2016, I was on Zoom. I owned plenty of Bitcoin, okay? I was telling people to buy Bitcoin. I've been telling people to buy Bitcoin since 2013 when I got my first Bitcoin. So I get this decentralized digital currency, virtual reality. You know, some people, older people are like, it's all of the ether. It's fake. 
It, it's it's no, it's real. It is. How can you say Bitcoin is fake at this point when it's made? I made people millionaires besides making myself a millionaire from taking my advice. Other people DM me and say, you've made me a millionaire from the things that you've said. So I, I'm giving you I'm telling you right now, this metaverse thing is bigger than money. OK, it is the digitalization of everything. So you wait a second. And we're going to explain how everything can be digitalized. Because most of you say, well, no, how can my kitchen sink be digitalized? How can my hat house, because my house is reality. You can't say my house is in this made up, may believe world. We'll get into that. So let's go back to 2016 with my Zoom meeting. And I'm telling you about my Zoom meeting that I had with Gabriel in Chile and uh, who's now back in Canada. And I told you that, uh, well, for, for my Zoom, now you couldn't do this back then, but let's pretend you could. For my Zoom meeting, I presented myself as a dog. I was a dog. I'm a dog. I, I was a, then they'd be like, no, Adam, you're, you're not a dog. You're a man. Well, I, I was a female dog. And then you're not a female. You have a, you have a male private parts. I, I, but, but if you, but guys, I was on the, if you go to the Zoom, you know, I've got a tape of the Zoom. I, in the Zoom meeting, I I was a female dog. I was a female dog. You could see I was I was nude. You could see I didn't have a uh, male parts and I was a dog, clearly a poodle. I was a I was a poodle in the meeting. And people would be like, you're insane. You're insane. You're not a you're not a female dog. You're, you're not a female. You're not a dog. No, but I, I'll say, yeah, I, I am. I am actually. I mean, go go to the go to the meeting. I, I'm a female dog. Now, let's fast forward to 2021. And uh, we live in a very comfortable world. Um, a lot of people have a lot of extra time on their hands. A lot of people have been stuck in their house for almost two years. A lot of pe- people have been in a lot of Zoom meetings, and that's kind of becoming their reality. A lot of people uh, deny uh, reality. The denial of physical reality is the norm now. Your truth is reality. Now, in the in the physical world, if I go around saying I'm a female dog, I'm a female dog, a lot of people, are most people are going to say you're crazy. But there are some people now that will say, well, no, if you say you're a female, you're a female. You're a female. You know, Adam, you're, you're a female. Yeah, you say you're a female. Even though you're walking around naked and I see your slang, you are a female. You're, you're a female. You know, I, I knew you since you're 20 years old, but you say you're a female, you're a female. Um, but most people will be like, no, 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 no. So it's hard in the real world to have these um, misconceptions about yourself, these delusions of grandeur about yourself, and for people to take you seriously. Now, there are some. That's the thing. Most we, we now live in a world where if an authority figure tells you something can be true, then it can be true. There is no truth anymore. But it's hard to really live that in reality. But in virtual reality, you can see how you could be anything. You can make up your own little world, have your own little friends, be there all the time, have Zoom meetings with them, do social media stuff with them, uh, participate in virtual reality stuff with them. And you could say over and over again, you're, I'm a female dog. If you don't believe I'm a female dog, you're not. You're cut out of my metaverse. You're cut out of this. And everyone around you will reassure you that you are a female dog. There'll be a, a house plant. There'll be a kitchen sink. Um, there'll be an alien there too. It's whatever you want it to be. That is the metaverse where it's limitless. The delusions of grandeur you can have. Or, I mean, but there's productive stuff you could do too. There is no truth in the metaverse. In each separate little corner of the metaverse, you make up your own truth on a whim and no one can attack you. You can, if they do, you cut them out. They're, they're gone from your, your social media feed, from your, from your Zoom meeting, from, from whatever it is. They're gone. This is your, now in this virtual reality. And so we already have built some of the tools for this metaverse. Okay. People like to show off certain things online now too. Was that a thing back in the day when people used to walk around outside and they would show up, show off their gold chains and they would show off their rims on their car? Now they want to show they got the coolest background on Zoom. Or maybe they want to show, uh, prove that they own a piece of digital art on Zoom. Okay, You see where we're going here with this. So people love brands. People love to show off, okay? People love to be branded, in fact. And uh, it's easy to join. People love being parts of uh, tribes. They love being parts of tribes. This virtual world you know, takes it to another level. You could be have the freakiest tribe you want to. You can show 
and again, it's limitless in this virtual world. You could be a billionaire there, print your own digital money. And it's up to others to decide if there's value for what you're talking about. If enough people believe in your delusion, then you have there's some value to that in this fake world because there's, there's no limits in this fake world. And yes, it is a fake world on what we're used to in this real world, okay? But there is no truth in this fake world. There, so it's true. So you can make up anything, any lie you want. And that's that's truth. That's your truth. There's no objective truth is what I'm saying. There's just, a, a, you know, truth on the whim. That is what is lives in the metaverse. You make up your own truth. And some of you are saying, well, that's horrible. That's not logical. That's against my philosophy. And I, I don't believe in making up lies and that being your reality. I don't want to live in this metaverse. Um, but I can't deny that this is happening. How can, after these last two years, can you do not deny that people have become insane and that people have become hypochondriacs and that people become, that this, if someone tells them this is the truth and it's a total lie, but it's an authority figure, they're going to believe it. How can you deny that people make up their own realities now? All right. So where's the best place to make up your own reality? It, it's not. Going at, and that people don't go outside anymore. People love to be inside. People love to be in, in their own little spaces. They don't want to be around people. Are, are people, you know, there's a significant number of people in the population who are scared of other people now just to, to catch something, just to be around everything. People become more shut ins. Now, I haven't. You don't have to be that person, okay? But we, for the last two years, all these kids, this is taking up huge hunks of their lives now. Two years is a big hunk of a 10-year-old's life. Now, isn't it? That's 20% of their freaking life. They've lived in this insanity. And they're very digitally oriented people. So if you say this is just a fad, this met I'm not buying into this metaverse because I know what reality is. These little kids, for because, because of the last two years, but also because they're more digitally oriented anyway, this digital realm, this make-believe realm, it is reality to them. It is something they are very comfortable with. Now, if you're someone who believes in digital currency like me, uh, that's very good. They don't need to have a physical world dollar anymore. They 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 could transition into Bitcoin. That's a positive. There are positives to being more digitally aware. Okay, there are plenty of positives. But as you can see, there are there's insanity to it too. Okay, where. And so where, where, where people are valuing all this made up stuff in this virtual world, all right? And they can just make it up like, limitless. They can be anything. They can say, this from the real world is now in my world and I own it. I own real estate in this digital world, in this metaverse. This is, this is the metaverse. So we have plenty of people who are in powerful corporations who already deal with digital type of uh, things, digital aspects. And they see the potential here. They see the potential here. You guys, people were laughing and saying that my, Mark Zuckerberg, one of the richest men on earth, who controls one of the most powerful companies, in most important companies in the history of mankind so far, you, they, they laughed at him because he changed the name of uh, Facebook to Meta. And they're like, this Metaverse thing is just in the ether. It's just fake. No, 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 no. That should have been a sign right there to you, okay, dudes, that, that he changed his name of his company, Meta. Facebook is just a small sliver of this metaverse. You get to brag to all your friends on Facebook. You already do it. That's not the real world Facebook, but for lots of people already, Facebook is the real world. That's the real world. He's just scaling it up a freaking level. He's going to have stuff above that. Facebook will just be part of this metaverse. Facebook is a very small part of the metaverse. Now, in, in you know, to, to, to make things, in, he wanted to create his own digital money, which I hope he does. All right. That would be part of the med, metaverse. You could spend this digital money on Facebook. All right. And there are, there, there, there's a meeting point between the real world and the metaverse. You might have to spend your real money in the real world to get your other money in the metaverse. Bitcoin will be in the metaverse. Ethereum is in the metaverse. There'll be all sorts of currencies in the metaverse. There's also going to be art in the metaverse. Now, isn't there? And we're already starting to see that, this, this digital art. Uh, but before I go on, um, I want, if you guys have questions in the chat, just uh, get my uh, 
get my uh, get my attention somehow. Uh, that that'll add to the show. Um, all right, yeah, but people, Tay, uh, they're scared. Uh, they scared people in California from going to the beach for the summer of 2020. Insane. Yes, people will listen to any authority. So again, there's a lot of you saying, well, who's going to believe this? Who's going to put value in this metaverse? If authority figures tell them, no, this is the real thing now. This is this is part of your real life. Um, people believe it and they're already, people are already used to it. You're already told you can't have a meeting physically anymore, but you can have your alumni reunion on zoom. <laughs> I mean, and people just take it. They're like, yeah, yeah, sure. I know. I don't need to see my friend. I don't have to go. We don't have to go to the physical school anymore to see people because I might, they might get me sick or, or something like that. So we'll just meet online. This will be our virtual world. And, and, but, but, and, and so it's, it's the transition is already there. It's a very easy transition. So to, to, don't deny it. Coinbase is going to host NFTs. All these corporations are – so what is an NFT? So let, let's get to what an NFT is, okay? Because an NFT is just a small part of this metaverse. It, it stands for non-fungible token. Which, which basically, you, you, um, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a serial code. It's a bunch of letters and numbers that represent something in the real world. And it's stored on Ethereum – or other cryptocurrencies. Uh, let, let's let, let's not get into any controversy with what's better, Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever. Bitcoin is the best money out there, but there's certain things you can't do with Bitcoin easily. Okay, with Ethereum, Ethereum is a cryptocurrency that you can build all sorts of tools with, uh, digital virtual tools with, and one of the things you can build on Ethereum is this a non-fungible token and from one ethereum address if you own some ethereum and someone else set own some ethereum and you create a digital token on your ethereum you can send it to another ethereum address i know it's a lot more complicated than that but this is all you need to know okay you could also do it and other cryptocurrencies do it for cheaper because ethereum is very popular um but that's how this nft thing started people so you Ethereum in the in the code, there's a digital there's a digital serial code in the Ethereum code uh, that allows certain browsers and websites to render an image that is represented by those serial numbers. Okay, now it, it gets a little bit more complex. You you want those serial numbers leading to an image that can't be changed. Now there are ways to do that. We're not going to get into that, okay? We're not going to get into that. But all you need to know is if that you own Ethereum, you can prove that you control this NFT. But And then you can show them what this NFT looks like. So it might just be a picture of Adam Meister's face. And then you show them, well, this is my NFT proves that I own it. In the metadata, it goes back to an address that clearly shows I, I control this NFT of Adam Meister's face. But then someone will say, well, wait a second. I can just click on this picture of Adam Meister's face that you're showing me, and I own it now. Like, I have a copy of it. I just saved it. And indeed, you do. You do have a copy of it now. But in the end of the day, that person still has the digital code connected to an Ethereum address that they clearly own that shows they control the code that is behind that picture. You can make all these copies of that of Adam Meister's picture as you want, but they've got the code. And then someone will say, well, there's no law that says that that code really makes you the owner of Adam Meister's face. Ha ha. That is also true. But if you believe in Ethereum, if you believe in met the metaverse, if you find value in cryptocurrency, that's all you need. You're the one that you, you're the one that has the code. It's all about what people's truth is. It's all about what story people believe in. And already everybody believes in that. Not everybody. Plenty of people believe in the non-fungible token story, NFT. And again, non-fungible token means it's unique. Okay. It's, it's like you can't, uh, the code behind it, there's only one code. That's it. It's unique. There's nothing like that. All right. Fungible, you can't tell the difference. There'd be a bunch of codes. You wouldn't know who each code would be the same. They'd all be A A A A A A A A A, and you'd all own A A A A A. But no, this is so, so again. That's where the name comes from. Forget the term non-fungible token. You don't need to know that. 
You just need, need to know NFT, okay? And right now, most of these NFTs, these digital, these you can see them on your browser digitally. They're pictures. They're art. Everyone has become an art connoisseur, okay? You know, you got Snoop Dogg out there. You got all these people that are creating these art NFTs. And some of them are, are beautiful. Some of them are just pictures of what they own in reality. And, um, you know, they created in reality. And, and, and the real world, that we're the, the meat space world. And, and again, I just, I just want to stress to everyone. You still might be saying, well, it makes no sense. It makes no sense to me, but it's already making sense to plenty of people because the thing is is Ethereum or or Solana or whatever, these are basically decentralized ways of showing that you own this code. You're not relying on the Baltimore City Department of Records to, to, to prove that you own this code, okay? That you own it, okay? You don't, people don't need that anymore. People are tired of these centralized authorities that lie and cheat and change things. They like this blockchain stuff where it's distributed, decentralized. Um, it's not one source that's telling you that you own the code. There's all these entities all over the place validating things. I'm not here to explain to you the blockchain or whatever. I'm just giving you a basic explanation of cryptocurrency real quick here. So it's the cryptocurrency of Ethereum or, or, or Solana or Bitcoin. We can get into that too. And I do, I'm, you know, there's a, there's something called Stacks. It is another cryptocurrency that basically uses Bitcoin to prove that uh, it's legit, that it's decentralized. I'm not going to get into it. So you could have your NFTs on Bitcoin that way. Maybe there are other ways. I'm not a technical guru, but a lot of people are going to get angry because, again, I just want to stress again, Bitcoin is money. I don't, this NFT metaverse stuff is way beyond that. So some people are so stupid. They like hear me saying Ethereum. They're like, you don't like Bitcoin anymore. You're saying Ethereum is great. I'm telling you, the we, what we can't deny, there is value behind Ethereum. There is reality in this metaverse. It is happening. Coinbase is a publicly traded company. Facebook is a publicly traded company. Twitter is a publicly traded. They're all getting into this stuff. Okay. This is all, this is, Billions upon billions of dollars. Uh, the, 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 the big NFT plate. Now, one of the problems with NFTs right now is that in order to properly see them, that you, you have to go to a third party like Open Seas. Okay, Open Open Sea, Open Seas, whatever the company is. That's the big place where people are buying this digital art right now. Now, it, it's quite possible they want to go public one day. It's quite possible some mega corporation will buy them. They're worth billions of dollars now. This is no, this isn't make believe anymore people it might seem like make-believe to you but it, for some people it is their reality it, there is value in this stuff you can scream and deny it as much as you want to but nfts have value and, and the metaverse is real people are living in it there are plenty of people who would want nothing more to do with the real world anymore and would love to live the rest of their lives where they can pretend to be a female poodle in the um metaverse and show off to their other female poodle friends all the cool digital art they collected, all the NFTs they have uh, that that will be represented on, on a blockchain that they can clearly prove that that it's theirs. Okay, and it, it'll be universally um, acknowledged that if you you know show proof of uh, ownership of this NFT, you could get in to this digital club. You could be part of this digital tribe, but only if you have a certain NFT. Okay, and. One of the cool things, um, if there and there will be one day, there will be a browser that will allow you to use see NFT any NFT that's out there. Okay, right now these you know these third parties only let you see certain NFTs that they approve of. Okay, that maybe that they're selling on there. You go to Open Seas now. Again, I am not encouraging you to buy this digital art at all. It is so much of it is overpriced right now. If you're an artist like my friend is, an accomplished artist. Uh, it, right now, it's it's quite expensive to mint the art on Ethereum or Solana. I mean, it's, it's cheaper on the other ones. And it's difficult. It involves technical know-how. We're going to get to a point where it's easy to, to um, mint an NFT, whether it be art, whether it be marketing material, whether it be anything political material, anything you want to do, it'll be easy to mint. 
to create. Right now, it is not easy to 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 create it on the uh, on the blockchain. Okay, it's not easy. You might need to hire someone out there. It might be worth your while if you are a good artist to get in touch with some of these third parties. Okay, and get it get it up there. Um, one thing that I have thought of many uses for. So for me, it, it's obviously. NFTs are way bigger than art. But right now, there is definitely a bubble in it right now. People are paying all sorts of insane money, speculating on it. Or like, when is the next NFT drop coming when I can bid on this awesome art? Most of you are not art connoisseurs. But the funny thing is, most people, a lot of people now think they are art connoisseurs. And it, it's ridiculous. It's a bubble. Uh, so I do not buy it. If you're an artist, you, you should. And if you're a really good artist, like my friend, again, uh, it is definitely something to investigate. Uh, something that you could do if you're an artist or if you're someone who knows how to mint this stuff is create your own company now where you go to entities that need to raise funds, whether it be a, a, a church or a school. And I'm, I'm giving you a, a good idea here, people. So pay attention. Um, you, you tell them I can create a, you a, a series of NFTs. And you can uh, say we are giving away these NFTs to our alumni or our members who uh, send us uh, the biggest bid. And people already will want to have these things because they've heard about these NFTs. Now, again, the NFTs being on the blockchain, it allows a seamless trans transfer of NFT for cryptocurrency. You see, that's, the, that's why people think they're, people are printing their own money when they're printing an NFT, because you can easily turn an NFT into Ethereum if it's on Ethereum or into Solana if it's on Solana, okay? You can easily do it. So your, your alumni association, you went to uh, some uh, Baltimore, City, uh, Baltimore City High School, let's call it. There's a poly, poly, Baltimore City poly high school. You went to poly, all right? And you're in charge of the alumni association there. You need to raise money for it. You create... Uh, a series of an, uh, 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 an NFT for the class of 2000, 2001, 2002, 2000. Maybe you create five or six for each one, but there's only a special one. And, you know, there's some big schmo, schmo alumni out there. He wants to show that he's got the, the one unique one, the one special one. And he's going, who knows how much he's going to give to you or, or to your religious organization or whatever. So you, you, you can, these are things you can create that meet where the virtual world meets the Real world. So, so, I mean, there's positive things in there. Now, it, is that really art you're creating is, or is that just a brand you're creating? You're, you're creating a brand for your school that somebody wants to own, to show off. They're only buying it to show off. Now, where are they going to show it off? Now, right now, they, they could just say they owned it to their friends. They, I mean, they might be someone that's 80 years old or something. They, they, but if they're a younger person, will know how to do it correctly. They're gonna they're gonna have it on Open Seas or whatever, or they're gonna have it on Coinbase's platform, whatever that's going to be. Coinbase is gonna really incorporate social media into this too. I mean, it is a hot NFTs metaverse. It's a hybrid between social media and branding and marketing. Uh, so much, so much. It's redistribution of cultural influence. Remember this. I made up that term too. So don't let anybody steal that. I've been talking about that NFTs allow you to redistribute cultural influence. Right now, we have all these gatekeeper uh, social media platforms that if you're on a certain side of the culture, you can get censored. You can get cut off. You might not meet the algorithm, okay? You, you, but if you are able to create an NFT and there is a browser that is a neutral browser that allows anyone to show any NFT, view any NFT, then... The sky's the limit. No one can censor you. You can distribute your NFT to all sorts of people. It's a way to get your message across, your political message, whatever it might be. I mean, there's a big, you know, politicians. It, it, I mean, what I would advise a political campaign to do is create a bunch of NFTs and just give them, send them out to all the Ethereum addresses that you can figure out or, or, or Solana addresses or whatever on a platform, on open sea, okay? Give it away for free. It makes the news. People all of a sudden are part of your tribe, your political tribe. 
It is a way to brand people. And don't say people don't want to be branded now. They want to be branded more than ever. They crave tribalism more than ever. That's another thing. Now, I'm a unique beast. I encourage individualism. I don't care what team I'm on, what this. I, I mean, if you go back to my videos, when Trump was running against Hillary Clinton, I made specific videos that said, it's 2016. You should be learning about Bitcoin now instead of get, wasting your time on political nonsense. Who was right? Who was right? You tell me who was right. And then you tell, and then to figure out who was right about that. I trust me. I didn't waste my time on that nonsense. I didn't care when she, he won or she won or when he lost this time. And oh, I was just getting richer and richer and buying more and more and more. And what did that pay off for my life? I mean, I have a whole nother life now because I did. I didn't get caught up in this wild tribalism. I, I was a unique beast individual and tried to learn. I didn't try. You know, people are turned off from Bitcoin and some of this uh, technology stuff because of biases about other people who use it. Like Bitcoin people are like, well, only Ethereum people care about NFT. So I don't want to learn about it. I don't want to learn about it. But on a larger perspective, um, there's a lot of liberal people out there. I don't know. I don't want to hear about this cryptocurrency because I only crypto, only conservative people like it. Only libertarian people. You're handicapping yourself it, because this stuff is neutral. OK, cryptocurrency, NFTs, the metaverse, it's what you make of it. It's neutral. OK, you create your own little worlds in the metaverse. You can make it with well, you can make it as biased toward you as you want to. But. No one can stop you. No one can stop you. That, that That's where the neutrality is right now. There's no arbitrator of truth. There's no no one saying, well, since you're telling complete lies, you're you're cut off. I mean, we might live in a world – and this metaverse might get some big, so big that some people are like, I'm living in my own country now. This is my country. I don't have to pay taxes in America anymore. I don't care. We're electing our own president here. I mean, who – so this could backfire on a lot of people who want to get people stuck in their houses – but again, it's a redistribution of cultural influence. There are certain uh, people in the culture that are entities in the culture that are very powerful right now, and this will get around it. This is a way to get around it. Now, of course, Bitcoin is, a, a, of course, a way to get around it financially, but this is up a level here. This is the digitalization of everything. And it is very intriguing to people. In the metaverse, I can't stress it enough, there is no limit at all. So if you're... If you've got a, if you've, if you're a cryptocurrency and you've, and I mean, you've created your whole, I mean, Ethereum for the people that don't think Ethereum is going to go up in value because of this. I mean, it is, it is going to go up in value. I mean, it's, if it successfully powers this, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter to Bitcoin. Okay. Actually it does matter a bit because I believe the more legitimacy all sorts of cryptocurrencies get, that's great for Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the best cryptocurrency. I guess some of you are saying, well, Adam, why are you even bringing up Bitcoin now? I'm bringing this up because I'm the freaking Bitcoin meister. And there's so many people out there that are blind worshipers of Bitcoin. They are um, – and they prov they provide some value to Bitcoin, of course, by being almost – in a they, they believe in the Bitcoin Inquisition. That if you speak against, uh, against Bitcoin, you should be cut out of Bitcoin. But, of course, the beautiful thing is there are no rulers in Bitcoin, and you can never be cut out of Bitcoin. No one can ever take your Bitcoin away from you. But, you know, there can be social attacks against a person. But I, I, I just, I'm just trying to explain to everyone here, you know, reality versus what you want, okay? The reality is this metaverse thing is out there. It's real. People, Snoop Dogg is buying virtual property in this metaverse, okay? And because he's doing it, all these followers see an authority figure do it. And they have value. They think, well, I need virtual property also. And I know a lot of you are saying, well, it doesn't really exist. What's the value there? If enough people value it in this make, there is going to, they're going to be, you think real estate agents are disgusting liars now? Not that they all are, but a lot are. Wait till you see the ones that are going to pop up that are selling you digital real estate or that are sending, selling you real estate in the metaverse. Okay. And people are going to be paying cryptocurrency for it, all right? Ethereum, Bitcoin, whatever, which is real, which is real because you could use Bitcoin and Ethereum in the real world too, all right? So, um, I, and there's a, people can maybe make up their own uh, cryptocurrencies there too that currently have no value in the real world that will only have value in that world. Uh, but I, I just, I, I want to explain to everybody that because there is no objective truth in the metaverse, that it is limitless, all right. So if you've got objective truth here in reality with me and you're an individual 
and you're not emotional and you don't care about what side you're perceived to be on, you're favoring this coin, you're favoring this market, you can make a killing in this metaverse, all right? You be, if you have digital skills and simple digital skills that I've been teaching people for a while, do you know how to send a Bitcoin? Do you know how to store a Bitcoin? I mean, most of you that are familiar with Bitcoin do know how to do that, but a lot of people don't know how to do that. A lot, it, it's, if you know how to you know, send the Bitcoin, then you know how to send Ethereum. And all these people are going to need funding for their metaverse projects. I mean, because there, there are a lot of companies that want in on these NFTs. Learn how to freaking mint an NFT. You're going to be able to come be paid a lot of money. Coca-Cola, all these name brands, they're getting, they're getting it that they can brand people this way. All right. That they can, if you, if you know somebody's Ethereum address, you create an NFT. Now, again, the, the price of sending stuff on Ethereum now is very expensive, which adds to the uniqueness of some of the so-called art that's on there, all right? Because art should be real, real good art, you know, <laughs> that, that would be displayed at the Brooklyn Museum or whatever would, would be expensive if it was in the real market. So I, I don't, you know, people who complain about Ethereum, like I would rather use Solana, blah, 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 blah. You know, if you want a real elite art, then you're, you're willing to pay a price for it. But uh, my point is, is that if you know, people are going to need to know how to fund their Ethereum digital wallets in order to pay for this stuff. And so if you know how to do that, you, you make a kill, just advising on simple things like that. Now, to some of you, that might not seem very simple at all. Um, and uh, yeah, we have a uh, Marco who I met in person. He says, uh, this metaverse is not going anywhere. You are correct. And he says, I'm correct. And I'm saying he's correct. And has little to do with Bitcoin or ICOs or DeFi. Uh, yes, because a lot of people say this this uh, metaverse thing is just an Ethereum-based thing, just like the ICOs were a big bubble back in uh, 2017. This is just like the ICOs. Dudes, this is way bit bigger, completely different animal than the ICOs. Did uh, Facebook invest in ICOs? I mean, did the biggest corporations invest billions of dollars, change their name for ICOs? ICOs were just a bunch of, you know, cryptocurrency skilled people that printed their own money and gave it to stupid retail people and then it disappeared and uh, it didn't represent anything in the real world. I mean, it was, it was this, we're in a whole new reality here too. You know, I, I, I really dislike this, the, the saying, um, this is a, I forgot the, the whole saying now, uh, uh, this is the new world or this is, uh, this is the new reality. Everybody, every you know, with the virus and everything, everyone trying to say that the, 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 this is the new normal. This is the new normal. I, I, I really despise that, that term. Because for me, during this whole virus situation, and so, so some of you are going to be disgusted by this, but I'm a unique beast individual. You can't cancel me, and I don't care. That And that's the attitude that you should have when you're trying to learn about things. You shouldn't care about someone's politics. If someone smart is telling you something, uh, and, and is getting rich off of it, you should try to figure out what's really going on. You don't let your emotions get in the way. But for the last two years, I haven't changed a, damn, a darn thing about my life. I've been on plenty of planes. Pl I don't wear a mask. I don't follow any of those darn rules. I've been outside every single solitary day, whether I was in Los Angeles, where people were freaking out, and I got my butt out of Los Angeles as soon as I could. Um, but I've been all over. I've been going to blue, to blue states, to red states. Oh, there was a there was an outbreak here. There's an outbreak there. No, I don't care about any of it, okay? I don't care. For me, it's about living your freaking life in reality. Now, again, most people, many people have, again, whatever the authorities tell them to do, they've cut back on their lives. There are plenty of people who have died from other things during this, and they, they missed the last – I mean, you don't know when you're going to drop that, that dead of a heart attack, okay? You really don't know that at all. It, it means plenty of healthy people through – all time have just dropped dead from random things one day. And that's why you got to live every minute of your life to, to the fullest. And that's why I, I do it. I don't let any authority tell me, well, you got to, you got to lay back for the sake of some 80 year old um, that nobody cared about beforehand. You know, Adam, you, you shouldn't go outside. You shouldn't have fun with your life because of an 85 year old in a, who was dumped in a nursing home by their family might die. You know, their family doesn't give a darn about them since they've been 80 years old. They threw them off to some disgusting place. But you you can't have fun anymore because they might die or, or something because uh, some Italian guy in New York said they might die. And this is the reality for some people. People feel guilty about that and stuff. It's unbelievable what people can be told to do now. So, I mean, 
we're limited. Of, so that's the new norm. That that is some people. For me, there was no new normal. No new normal at all. But but I will say this. No matter what you know, centralized scare tactic people throw out there to try to take you away from your life, there is evolution. No matter what, and that the digital evolution has been sped up by this nonsense situation that we're living in. That we that some of us have lived in. I I, I ignore it totally. I don't. I don't let it limit me at all. As I've told you, I become uh, 2020 financially for me was incredible. 2020 was one of the best freaking because I didn't let anything get me down. I hear plenty of people online saying, you know, I was ruined financially in 2020. I, I, I lost every, no, 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 no. I was, I was completely prepared. I mean, again, I was on zoom in 2016. <laughs> I wasn't subdued. Like, well, how does this thing work in 2020? Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I understand the trends. I don't let other people's biases and political stuff distract me from what is what, what's on the cutting edge in life. And you can believe me if you want to believe me, or you could just, you can say, oh, he's just making all this up or whatever. I mean, go to, I have 2000 videos out there at disruptmeister.com. You decide for yourself, you know, if I was correct all along, or if I'm a person you should be listening to about technology oriented things that, uh, that maybe you don't fully understand, but it seems like a lot of people are talking about. Okay. Um, and the, another thing about life in general, when I was a young guy, um, and the, the web was, was coming out. Um, I thought this is, this is so earth shattering. Oh my God. This is like a once in a lifetime experience, uh, a, a event. Uh, I mean, it's like the discovery of, I mean, it only happens once every hundred years. It's like the discovery of electricity. I got it right away, but I was a kid. I was a kid. I couldn't, you know, put that, you know, I would, I got jobs in the industry eventually, but I couldn't really parlay it into becoming, you know, a lot of people got rich from the dot-com stuff. I didn't, I was a, a young Young, youngin, okay. So, and I thought back then, I'm like, this maybe it won't come around for another hundred years. When this Bitcoin thing came around in 20, when I when I really hit me in 2013, I'm like, oh my god, technology has sped up. That we're getting this, you know, a hundred year type of opportunities. Twenty, you know, you know, eighteen years after the other opportunity. So now we are less than ten years since cryptocurrency was introduced. And we've got this metaverse thing coming out now. All right. And this is just as big as those other two things. So I was back in the Bitcoin thing when the Bitcoin came out and I realized it was just as big, bigger than the internet. I knew right then. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I'm balls to the walls with the thing. I am not, I am not letting this pass. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm a freaking man. And a real man doesn't just complain and theorize and you say, and make up excuses. He does it. He does. And I did it. I did. And again, I, I, alluded to it on many of my shows how it's financially you know been very 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 good for me and um obviously for the future of the entire <laughs> whatever comes after me and my family is in very good shape also so um but so here we get the metaverse is your third opportunity if you were around, if you missed out on the uh on the, on the internet if you so it, it's just amazing but technology is so beautiful it's so it is it, it's getting faster and faster the amount of earth shattering world changing redistribution of you know poor people can become rich middle class people poor people can be, become wealthy so easily with these awesome opportunities but yet more and more in the world today we have more and more complainers who just want other people to take care of them for them and, and just to, to print up money for it and, and just do all this stuff. So as the technology becomes better and better and the more and more opportunities come out, come about there, it seems like there's more and more people are just more they're like, yeah, whatever. They, they let it pass it by. They're like, no, I'm not worthy of it. Or I can't believe it. It's true, dudes. I, it is true. The op, This is the golden age. The 2020s is a golden age. Um, and it's, it's, it's just incredible what this, what you can do still with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, but this metaverse is just, it, it's up. It's the digitalization of everything. And I, I just explained to you how everything can be digital and not how, not only how everything can be digitalized, but how things that don't even exist are digitalized too. Okay. Because again, there's, there's no such thing as the alien poodle with three testicles walking around, but in the metaverse, he's digitalized. Yes, yes, there is. In, in the metaverse, you, you can have that. You, you can really have that there, okay? And you can sell him. You can sell him. 
uh, and, and, you know, hit the ownership of him, uh, whether it be represented in, in a piece of art or, or something else. Uh, so <laughs> let's see if we have any questions here. Uh, yes, it, it is. <laughs> Uh, right. All right. So we got, uh, no, no one's got any, uh, questions out there. So I, I, I hope this is explained the, the importance uh, of the situation. So yes, there is no new normal, but there is fast technological evolution that we are experiencing that has somewhat been sped up. And I love, you know, when a negative thing happens, like the, the panic prison virus, people have, jailed themselves in, in their own made up panic prisons, you can derive something positive from it. It helps sped up, speed up digital uh, evolution. I always look on the bright side of things. And, and all of you can, can always look on the, should look on the bright side of things instead of throwing yourself in a panic prison. Now, again, the, the positive thing about uh, people being in delusional panic prisons now is that they will be free in the metaverse because you know, they'll limit themselves in social interaction in the real world, but you know, there's a certain type of uh, human beings need certain types of interactions and the metaverse will provide that for them. It will. Sure. It's all fake. You know, and you never really touch the person, see the person. They'll have weddings there. They'll have boyfriends and girls. And I know it sounds so sad not to ever have, um, you know, a real partner, a real love in your life that you physically bond with and everything like that. But it's become quite normal now. I mean, people have started their dating careers. It's totally online, which is sad. People in co- you know, people in college have been totally castrated. It seems like um, they they don't rebel anymore. They they did they didn't rebel against all this stuff. They just go to your room. You'll learn there. You no longer have a roommate. You can't drink and have parties anymore. And and so socially, they on Zoom they have Zoom parties and Zoom. They listen to Zoom music and they go on a Zoom date. Where you can't even, you know, kiss the per. I mean, it's, it's but that is normal. I, I, I'm not saying that's for them. That's normal. I'm not saying that's healthy physically. I don't think it's healthy at all. But the, in, in the metaverse, metaverse doesn't care about your physical health. And people are opting in. This no one is forced into this metaverse. I want to. I want to stress that. You know, people are putting themselves in these panic prisons. People are cho- choosing to go all digital. You can go, it's, as I said, I've been outside every single day during this whole situation and uh, no one stopped me from going. I mean, you can go outside right now. You can, you can meet a woman right now, meet a man, whatever you want to do. Um, but, but some people just, the rulers say you, people have just become such followers of rules and that they will retreat to these made up worlds where they will make up their own rules. And that's how they rebel against the real rules that they will still worship. But even in their again, even in their little metaverses, there will be more powerful entities that define things for them. And some people will want to be so much part of these virtual tribes that they'll do anything. They will spend whatever real world money they have left on NFTs that get them that prove to get them into these digital worlds. Uh, but so, for I'm a marketing guy, so I just see the the potential. Uh, in the in the, the marketing that's in the metaverse, because people will be spending so much time in Zoom rooms on Facebook, and if they, you know, if you're able to give them some something, an NFT that they can brag about to someone else, and it's got your brand on it, I mean, that increases your brand awareness, your brand value. And I, if I was if I was working in a corporation right now, I, I would hire a, a kid who knows how to, and I I can tell you how to do this. Figure out a, a bunch of people's Ethereum addresses on one of these platforms and just drop them NFTs of their, uh, of their brand on top of them. And so that they get it now that they get three copies of your brand. And that's a, that's that increases brand awareness right there for free. Now it costs some Ethereum fees or Solana fees or whatever. Uh, now I, I do want to say this. So right now metaverse is somewhat centralized. There are, uh, you know, third parties where you have to see your NFT uh, the, the, and, but the cool thing is people are working, I, I, I think it'd be a great project, on just neutral ones where you can see everything. The true test, I call it the swastika test. Are you able to make an NFT with a swastika in it? And, and, or is it able to be viewed? 
on, on this browser. On Coinbase, they won't let they won't let you see it. Or on Meta, which is Facebook, they won't. Let, if you have, they'll, they'll you might you may be able to get it in for a few seconds, um, but I'm sure they'll cut it out in, in very very fast. On Twitter, they'll, they'll get rid of it. Now again, I don't like swastikas. Obviously, I'm I'm Jewish. I think it's it's detestable. But for something truly to be neutral and something to be able to, you, you should be able to create an NFT that says I associate this uh, group with the swastika. Okay, they, they equal. And people, well, that's not true. Well, let's have a debate about it, okay? Um, but but that's how you know your NFT um, is on. Uh, if people are able to view it, it's it's on a platform that is uh, neutral and doesn't care about politics and doesn't care about anything like that. Uh, so so we'll, we'll we'll get there now. But right now, viewing NFTs, the metaverse itself depends on third party access that can be limiting. And by the way, Coinbase hasn't even introduced their NFT platform yet. I'm sure it'll be pretty darn good uh, because they are experts in cryptocurrency and uh, and if they combine social media into it correctly, it's a hybrid. Metaverse is a hybrid between social media and branding and and, and so are NFTs. I mean, there's so, there's some really cool stuff going on, okay? And th- this is not just catchphrases I'm throwing out to you, okay? This is real demonstrable type of stuff once it really gets going, okay? So we, we're already seeing through this digital art, this is the first gl- glimpses of the power of NFT, the metaverse becoming mainstream in the real world, world that bring more normies into cryptocurrency and the metaverse. It's it's kosher for them now. It's cool for them now that these celebrities are doing it. And yeah, so they're... they're they're doing it to make money, and that the fact that they're making money off it, off of it, gives it more legitimacy. It proves to you that it's just not in the ether. That there is value behind this, and you might be disgusted by it. That people believe in their that there is no truth, there is no objective truth in this made up world, and people are paying money to be in this real. But it's real. It, it's happening. This is happening. We cannot deny it. So I mean, you can deny it. But it's still going on. It's, it's not going to stop it from happening and adding value to maybe things you don't think should have value. But if other people think it has value, enough people think it has value, okay? Uh, we're, at, we're at a point in the real world. Let's, let's take it to the real world again. The dollar. The dollar is print. I mean, they keep printing more and more and more of it. People are just listening to their leaders so much. They say the dollar is worth something. Thus, it's not backed by anything. It's not backed by anything. They could print more and more and more of it. And people are still, you know, for whatever reason, they they need to live in this reality where the dollar is worth something and where their leader is respectable and where their house has value and where so, that the dollar will have value. For, for, I mean, people say Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. The dollar has no intrinsic The dollar has no intrinsic value either. But it... it but now, you know, intrinsic value can be simply defined by, you know, a voice of authority screams it loud enough. Enough people believe it. It, it that is value. That is right. So the dollar has value. It dollar is it, it's its brand is so strong. A, a lot of value has to do with branding. Thus, NFTs are a lot about branding too. So the dollar has the best brand of any currency ever created, ever. And, and, and because people are always saying, it's going to be hyperinflated away. It's going to, it's not going to be hyperinflated away. Too much people have too much at, at stake in it to, to give up on that story, to give up on that brand. You travel to any country. Or, I mean, right now, the inflation is worth, worse in Pakistan than it is in the United States. It's over 10%. Pakistan will one day have, and Nigeria, same thing. They one day will have more people than the United States does. You go there right now. You tell them, would you rather pay me, you pay me, in a dollars or in your Pakistani currency or in the Nigerian currency, everyone will say dollars. I've been in Argentina where they've accepted my dollars over the Argentine peso. Okay, the dollar is a brand. Whether and this is another. This is my final reminder to all the haters of the United States that think that we're just like all the other countries. We will fall down. Our 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 currency will become um, worthless. Blah 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 blah. This is where all the technology takes place. Okay. Whether you like, most of it takes place. Are people in, uh, I mean, in, 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 in Asia, in certain parts of Asia, 
or in, 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 in Africa, in, in South America? Are they coming up with, uh, all, who came up with cryptocurrency? Who came up with Facebook, all this social media? Where does social media get developed? Where the internet, where the dot coms come from? It all came from the United, we are the innovators of the world. We are also the marketers of the world. I've been all over this world. People don't know how to market. It's really weird. So, so again, it's it's being born. All this, there is a benefit to the people to the people who get exposed to this stuff first to being an innovator. And sure, there there are Europeans that are in on the cryptocurrency and the metaverse too. And and in and, and South Africa, people are doing cool things also. And you can find some unique beast in every single country on this planet. Okay, but dudes. You might not like the term s whole country, but there are plenty. Of, it's, it's a true thing. Nothing's going on in these countries. They, their leaders are so corrupt. Their currencies are worth nothing. They would give anything to come to the United States of America. This is, it is a reality. And why? Because we produce wealth here. We produce innovation here. We produce new innovative things here. Despite all the, the craziness that we've experienced here, it hasn't been as bad as in other countries, we still have, depending on what state you're in, it hasn't been bad at all. It's been, still have freedom because this country was founded on an innovative spirit. It's something that's passed on for generation to generation. I mean, I don't know what else I can say, but it's paid off so greatly that the people who do nothing in this country live such a comfortable life thanks to the wealth. And in, everybody can have a, every, I mean, you might be in debt. You might have a negative net worth, okay? You could have a, a smartphone. It, you are living so – the poorest of the poor in the United States of America live so much better than in all these other countries. And that is because of the innovation that keeps on popping up here for whatever reason. And it's popping up again with crypto – you know, Bitcoin is – most – all the big, most of the great Bitcoin companies are in the United States. Most of the bit, great Bitcoin mines are in the United States. Not all. There's just pl plenty in Canada, plenty in, I mean, if you want to be great in the Bitcoin space, you got to speak English. You got, what's English the language of, of the United States, okay? And, and people go, well, this is, you're so biased toward the United States. You're a hater of the rest of the world. You're saying asshole countries. I'm telling you reality. If you want to deny that there are asshole countries, if you wanted to deny that the culture of, of entrepreneurship of entrepreneurialism in America is superior to all other cultures. Then go have fun staying poor, have fun staying. And you could go to your metaverse and live in that reality there. Okay. And that's awesome. Now you can live in that fake world where, um, you know, the, the sub-Saharan Africa is the greatest accomplishment in mankind. And the United States is the heart that we don't create anything. There's no wealth here. Um, it, it, it's it, the third world countries rule the world. They are the great cre create a metaverse space about that. And you could be a poodle there too and, and celebrate. And that's the awesome thing. This is a, that, that, that's the limitless. But again, here in Real, in, 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 in the meat space here, the, the entrepreneurialism here, I am so inspired by it. Um, and I, 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 I'm not just talking the talk. I bought into it, bought the Bitcoin, created shows about 2000 shows about Bitcoin. I'm living it. Uh, and you could do it too whether it be with Bitcoin, whether it be with how you can contribute to this metaverse thing or whatever. And I, I just want to stress again, metaverse, NFTs are not money. You're not betraying Bitcoin. If you're working for, if you're, consult, if you're teaching someone how to send an Ethereum and you're making money off of it, good for you that you could be, that, that we live in a world where you just took a, you know, a few minutes to learn how to send cryptocurrency and how to store cryptocurrency. And that's paying off for you to make $200 an hour now. Okay. And, and it can. You just need the initiative. You just need to cut on Twitter. You can contact so many people through DMs in, in the crypto. If you want a job in the cryptocurrency space right now, you you go, you find some company, you figure out a way how you can contribute to them. You contact their CEO, send them a DM and say, would you like to hire me? This is what I can contribute, contribute to your team. They might just hire you. I mean, this is the awesome world that we live in. And that's, that's metaverse based too. That's, that's in a virtual reality, isn't it? That you know your your Twitter personality is contacting their Twitter personality, uh, setting up something in the real world. And it's a very useful uh, useful uh, aspect of, of this virtual world, virtual connections, virtual. You, you're friends with somebody on, virtually friends with someone on Twitter because you share the same you know tweets, you retweet each other. 
one day you can, you know, set up a situation where you have a mutually uh, beneficial uh, financial arrangement where you start a company together that uh, doesn't need a physical location anymore. I mean, that's that's a beautiful part of the aspect of the metaverse that we're already living in. You can start companies now that you don't need to know what your partner's real name is, that you don't need a physical location. No one has to report to a physical location. It's awesome. Now, so let's go back to social media right now. It's already a part of the metaverse, but it's going to be drawn more into this metaverse where you can show what NFTs that you own. You can, and you can prove it easily through Twitter will be a way to prove that you on the blockchain are the holder of the NFT code, okay? So that's going to be a third party. Of course, if you're already an established social media um, entity, you're going to want to be a third party validator of NFTs where you can say, yes, this is the real NFT holder, okay? And so that person will feel very special and they will use your your platform and you can charge them for things. I, I don't know. I mean, there there is potential. People value this, these digital assets so they can brag to people, okay? And they they want a way to brag to people. Now, a lot of you are like, I don't need glam. I don't need gold chains in the real world. And that, I think that's good for you. I mean, that shows a certain level of self, self-confidence. But 80% of the people don't have that, that level of self-confidence. They want to, the reason they got a fancy car in the first place wasn't for themselves to make themselves happy. It was to show off to their neighbor. So you could do the same thing in the digital world. You're only buying things, NFTs, to show off to the your virtual friend who's got better NFTs than you, that you have better NFTs than him. Or they, now you have digital real estate next to Snoop Dogg and he only has it next to Adam Meister. Or not, not that I'm going to buy. Again, if you want to give me free digital real estate, I will take it. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I have no problem. I've, I've always said, you know, people send me any cryptocurrency you got. I'll just turn it into Bitcoin or whatever. Same thing. If you've got, um, you know, you, 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 if you've got digital real estate to, to give me, I mean, you know, give me the, uh, uh, you know, I'll hang on to some of it and, uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll dump the other for, for Bitcoin at some point. So you, you can say, look, I gave Adam digital real estate. He still owns it. Okay, great. But I mean, I, I dumped some of it. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not buying it. I do not buy what I can get for free. And trust me, I know I can get that stuff for free. But most people are not that patient when it comes to anything in their lives. And they got to have it now. It's such an impulsive world. It's such a latest fad, latest fad type of thing. And they're going in this virtual world. There'll be latest fad after latest fad. It'll be for eternity, latest fad. So, I mean, the you see the potential here in this fake metaverse world, which, again, comes in contact with our real world. It is inter- intertwined. Some aspects of it, of it are intertwined with the real world. But, of course, the, 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 the completely ridiculous, you know, alien with three testicles who's a cow and a female at the same time, that's not in our real world. That can only be in the metaverse. But... If that's your reality, then that's your you're, you're going to buy right into that. If you become so uh, uh, out of touch with the real world and you so want your truth to be true, the metaverse is the place to be where there is no objective truth and you can just, quote unquote, live it all. And I can't stop people from doing it. But again, no one can be forced into the metaverse. I, I, I want to I want to stress that, you know, this is this is an opt in type of thing. This is the cool thing about most things in life. Are, are opt in. Most things are like then are, are, are opt in. If, if, if well, mo- decentralized things in life. Right? I mean, if if you're in a country, you gotta you know they, they can use for until they use force against you. Most things are opt in, uh, but we're not we're not gonna get into the philosophical aspects of it. Uh, I, I just I mean, there's, there's a lot of people that are gonna say, but I don't want to be in the metaverse. Good, good. You, you don't have to be in the metaverse. No one has to, that that that's that's the point I'm trying to make. I don't want to have a Bitcoin. I don't. Okay, yeah, no, you don't have to have Bitcoin. I mean, th- th- that's one of the funniest things. There are these people that. I mean, I, I made a prediction today. Soon, people, in, in order to attack Bitcoin, they're going to say it's a threat to democracy. I mean, what what I say and it is like, why don't you just worry about yourself, dude? I mean, like, if people are having fun with Bitcoin, what's that got to do with you if you're a hater of Bitcoin? So, I mean, if people are having fun in the metaverse with Ethereum or, or Solana or whatever, or even with Bitcoin. But you don't like that? I mean, what's that got to do with you? You lived your life. You and, and that that's that's one of the things I've talked about on my shows before. You know, a, a lot there's the big buzzword, income inequality, wealth inequality. People are envious that Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates are super duper wealthy. What's that got to do with you? 
I mean, really, you fix your own, pro you could still become wealthy just because they got super wealthy during the last two years and you were scared. You, you're blaming it on them? No, you were the scared one that was hiding in your house. You could have become, I became wealthier. It was awesome. <laughs> It was freaking awesome. I mean, it was <laughs> all the panic that I made. <laughs> Most of you guys know that on, uh, you know, the, the price of Bitcoin crashed on March 12th and 13th of, uh, of 2020. And I, I bought two more Bitcoin that day for a total of $10,000. And, and now those two Bitcoin are worth like a total of over $100,000 or something like that. Um, and it, it, it just because every, people thought the world was going to end. Dude, the world's not going to end. Like that that's the we're living in this such a hyper world now where everyone's like living on edge. They something big happens and they think it's the biggest thing ever and everything's not going to be the same the next day. Nothing will get back to normal. Um yeah, a lot of people lost a lot of money when all the financial markets crashed on March 12th and 13th of 2020 and they sold everything. I mean, I knew right then I'm like it's temporary. And what I also knew right then is that the government was going to give us all checks. And then I was going to spend my government check before I even got my government check. And I spent it on that Bitcoin. <laughs> but I mean, I mean there, there you go. So uh, there's all sorts of opportunity in, in this in this golden age that we're living in. Felt like there was something else I was about to say that I lost track of probably. Uh, uh, Marco asked me, uh, what, what platform do I like best for the metaverse? I don't I don't care. Let the best man win. I, I have no, I think, I mean, a better question, because I don't, I don't, I don't really use it. I don't use the, I mean, what do I, what do I use the metaverse for? I mean, I, I mean, in terms of, you're just, I, I assume you're talking about a uh, cryptocurrency platform, but there's going to be all sorts of platforms within the metaverse, your, your video platform, uh, your, your social media that you, that, that you're hanging out on the most. But what I, what I think about is uh, that you're probably asking me is what, you know, what's the, uh, you know, what backbone cryptocurrency uh, do I believe will be the most successful in, in the metaverse in terms of building NFTs and building all sorts of things that we can't imagine right now? And I do think it will be Ethereum. I, I don't believe in the, I've said from the start that Ethereum is ne the next Ethereum. It has been around the longest. It is universally accepted as the number two cryptocurrency. And it's different for Bitcoin. They're apples and oranges. You know, when I, when I watched Ben Shapiro, who's a very smart guy, He's not an expert in cryptocurrency, but he he understands the importance of Bitcoin and uh, as a, as a hedge against inflation. He says, you know, I'm proud that I own Bitcoin and Ethereum. He he ties them together, and although they're they're different, they are tied together quite often now. You know, not everybody in this world can know every single cryptocurrency. You know what Solana is, know what everything, but generally smart people who are aware of cryptocurrencies and are good with finances. What they will immediately name drop besides Bitcoin, it's Ethereum. And so there are plenty of developers working on Ethereum. And so I think Ethereum is the next Ethereum. And it will uh, do very well in this metaverse uh, in, in terms of building these products on top of it. But again, the best money ever created is Bitcoin. It has the best financial policy that never changes and that is very important to people to be boring and stable uh, for a financial investment is is very very important. Stability it's just not going to change on a dime. Ethereum things have changed over the years. There's a certain level of centralization. Um, and Marco says I was at an event when Kevin O'Leary on uh, uh, with Kevin O'Leary on March 12th and he was dumping on Bitcoin. When I got home, I told my wife, I'm buying a Bitcoin tonight just to prove my conviction. Yeah, that was a very good idea on your part. And Kevin O'Leary is a, a showman who changes his mind on a lot of things. He's pretty smart with certain things, but he's uh, he knows on what trends to talk about. I mean, he's building his brand. He's very good. Kevin O'Leary is great at building his brand. I'm sure he'll have a, a, a big place in the metaverse once it matures or probably early on in, in the metaverse. There was something else I was going to say about... Uh, the, the, the panic that people had back in uh, back in uh, 2020. Uh, well, anyway, yeah, you know, no, we were talking about income, income inequality. Yeah, so again, better yourself. Personal responsibility is the new counterculture. 
You make yourself, you, if you're watching this video, you, you've you been presented with so many opportunities here with knowledge. You can continue to complain about why other people are richer, why other people make money, more money than you, but you really should be worried about yourself and just try to improve your own situation. It's because we're in this golden age and we're living in the best country on earth with the most technology on earth. It's constantly new stuff, constantly being developed, new industries. We In the United States of America, a, a tremendous hunk of the population, I was about to say maybe all of the legal population now, we might be at a point where no one has to do hard labor anymore, where we can just let all the immigrants come in from Nigeria and uh, Pakistan and do our all, and Mexico and wherever and do our hard labor for us. I mean, that is what they do in Dubai, by the way. Um, they, well, first, they do two different things. They let a bunch of Westerners come in and then they let a bunch of um, people from Pakistan come in and do live under horrible conditions and, you know, do things that are very unfair to them, like steal their passports and let them do all the grunt work. Well, we could do it on, on a freedom. In, in the United States, we're already at that level where we could do that on, on a freedom basis where we're like, okay, if we let all these immigrants in from all over the world, the native, we, no one would have to do grunt. Our lives would be so much easier. We would just, we would be working in these digital realms there would be plenty of value in the di- – because as people become more spoiled and fat, they're willing to – they just spend on anything, okay? I mean, and they, that's – that also has sped up the the mentality of value in this fake world, you know, because people are so – they're living in such cushy lifestyles here. They don't need – and they, they they literally are getting paid by the government to do nothing. Um, and, yeah, so, so we, we could really – we could have a as long as you know the new immigrants would not be allowed to get welfare. They wouldn't be allowed to vote right away. They would just be workers who would be paid in dollars, which would be worth worth quite a lot. I mean, I, I and they would be living the American freaking dream and just doing all the all the hard labor. And there's no shame in doing hard labor at all. Working construction and all that. It, it's it's it would be great. It's much better than living in oppressive Pakistan <laughs> or Nigeria. You know, the, again, the poorest of the poor in those countries, they don't have they don't have toilets. They don't. I mean, it, it's it's horrifying. It, you would you find it. There's no drink, clean drinking water. So to, to I mean, I, I've gone off on a little bit of a tangent here, but I'm just trying to put it in perspective. The life, the lives that we now have in the West and why you should not be worried about income inequality at all. You worry about getting yourself. You don't be jealous. Don't be envious of somebody. As much as I shout it to the world, the envy will I mean, it fuels so many different people. So, um, and it will fuel the metaverse to the competitions. I, I, I can't stop people from being envious. I can just encourage people and tell them that it's, it's a much better feeling to be productive on your own, be successful on your own, and not worry about what other people are thinking about you or that other people are doing better than you. But there's always going to be somebody that has more money than you. All right. There, there always is. So don't worry about it. Bill Gates is always going to be richer than you. So is Mark Zuckerberg. Um, and it's just, the sad part is, I'm just tying it all together again, the income inequality crowd, wealth inequality crowd that wants to steal from Mark Zuckerberg, wants to shut down his private company because they don't like it. They hate him so much and they laugh at him when he calls something meta um, that they're missing out on such an opportunity because if Mark Zuckerberg is involved with it, I don't want to be involved with it. I mean, how backward is that? If one of the richest, most successful people in the history of mankind is involved with it, I don't want to be involved. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you? <laughs> all right. All right, dudes. I think that's it. Let's see if there are any other questions. I I hope that helped. So it's w- NFTs way more than art. Um, I can't even explain to you how big the metaverse is going to be. Um, just like when I was a kid. How could I told you they're going to create YouTube on the internet? I couldn't. Or that they're going to create social media on the internet. These are just, they're going to be all these new concepts that are going to be built out because of the freedom that the metaverse also provides. All right. And the freedom that decentralization allows. And and I, I, I want to stress that too. If you live in a society that encourages innovation, that is not collectivist, that doesn't hold back people, it is going to progress so much faster. 
And in the United States, there are a lot of people that want to hold you back and do all this stuff. And there are a lot of laws and regulations. But in the technology space, of all the spaces out there, that's where there's the least regul. You know, for the people who want to regulate Facebook and social media, such a mistake. It will cut down on innovation. It will cut down on jobs. And in the, in the long run, it will hurt you. So in the technology space as we know it in the Western world right now, we're going through a revolution. There are the, – the, the regulators cannot they, – they are so backward and old that they, they can't stay at the same pace as the technology. And that's awesome. And that just gives so much freedom and so much room to innovate. So – this is what this is the cool part about the metaverse that they, since there are no limits um, and there is no regulation, that there's going to be a lot of cool stuff that's going to come out of this NFTs, metaverse, whatever, uh, cryptocurrency. Um, it, it's it is so, and, and I've been calling it the golden age before the metaverse term was even um, not created, but um, applied to what is going on. Because you, know, at first, because you you have to really have a broader perspective of life in general to understand what this theoretical metaverse is because it's not something that you can touch it take if there's abstraction involved here but the young people are going to grow up with it and have already grown up with it that it is it's not an abstraction to them for some of you i understand why it's still an abstraction you're going to need more time to make it real in your head but we're entering We've already entered a new paradigm. We just haven't realized it yet. Um, but this metaverse, it is real. It is it is a it is a, a virtual place you can um, do all sorts of things in, and uh, you don't have to go there. And you do. There's a certain level uh, amount of time you can spend there, or you can just it can become your reality. I'm not encouraging it to do that, but you can see how it will become some people's reality. So there's plenty of opportunity for the people who can jump back and forth between re objective reality and this. Uh, and, you know, for some people, for some people who live, who do have harsh realities in their life, certain handicaps, certain diseases, um, this would be a very positive thing, you know, to, to, to be, to maybe a way to express their inner selves that most people ignore in the real world, they'll be able to express in, in, in the metaverse um, clearer when they present themselves as whatever they feel like they are on the inside. And God willing, God willing, you know, that the technology, that the, that the, the regulation that all the jealous people want, that will want to put on the metaverse and want to put on people like Elon Musk, may that regulation never come about because you know, if Elon Musk and his people are allowed to continue to be free in this real world, you know, they're, they're working on, you know, brain interfaces, which, you know, scare people to a certain level, you know, I'm going to be hooked up to a computer. But if you're a blind person, you'll be able to see again. OK, I mean, you'll be able to walk again. Some of this stuff is going to be and, and maybe at first you won't be able to see reality at first. You might only be able to see in the metaverse and that'll be that'll be a step forward. So for all you people who love uh mommy regulator and daddy regulator. And, and, you know, it's unfair that Elon does this, that, and you want to micromanage what Elon Musk does. Just think about what, it, what this, what stopping um, innovation does to, to certain people out there that it, I mean, it, it's the difference between just like totally altering, but there are some people in reality, it cannot be denied just through bad luck, um, through illness, they are in bad situations and it's only going to be technology that improves their lives. Um, so I, I find it disgusting that anybody wants to regulate people like Elon Musk and, and, um, and, and anybody that's, that's the, the villain of the day. These are the people that should be respected and, and should be admired. And if they're doing something, you should be intrigued by it. You shouldn't be immediately triggered to hate it. Ugh, it's disgusting. It's so wasteful that people are going to Mars. Ugh. Well, the technology that will involve that will be developed for people to safely get to Mars it could, it might make, it'll probably make your world, your, the, it'll make your world a better place. Okay. It'll make, you'll be able to get it for cheap one day and you'll, you'll be able to live to be a hundred or 120 or something like that. Who knows what comes out of it? Innovation is so unpredictable and awesome. And but yet people want to be, want to hate on it and want to be envious of it. So there you go. Um, metaverse is part of that innovation. It is part of that innovation. I know it's very abstract to some people, um, but we're living in a freaking golden age. All right, dudes. So I, I hope that explained it to everyone. If you've got questions, 
You could send me a DM on Twitter, T-E-C-H-B-A-L-T, or just email me at adam at trezorhelp.com. It's linked to below. You can send me PayPal contributions that way. <laughs> and um, I, I, and also, you know, we, we do the super chat on the main channel. You can send me crypto, uh, Bitcoin, whatever. I've got addresses listed below. I even got a Lightning Network uh, address on Bitcoin now, too. I've mentioned that a few times. Uh, I, I, hey, I'm a guy who appreciates uh, financial uh, uh, rewards. You know, you, you, never, you never get enough of it. I don't turn down free money. I don't. All right. Pound that like button, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for all the support. Uh, we, are, we are in a golden age, and I'm making the most of life. And I love it. I love it. And Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin, dudes. See you later. See ya.